So now we've had a look at the Chinese room argument. What we're going to do in this lesson is have a look at three main criticisms of the Chinese room argument. So we're going to have a look a little bit against it by looking at the system's response, the idea that uh, the Chinese room acts as a system and Searle is misunderstanding really the idea of computers in general. We're going to have a look at the current intuition argument and then we're going to have a look at the robot argument. And what's really good about these arguments is that Searle has been very engaged in the debate on the Chinese room argument ever since he published his paper. So he's been able to offer some responses to some of these arguments. Um, and the question as to whether or not those responses are very very valid or you know very strong responses is a matter for another day. But we'll just discuss the dis responses as well as the arguments. Okay. So first of all, the systems reply. So some suggest that Searle is not accurately representing the idea of a computer correctly. Searle claims that the person in the room does not understand Chinese, and this represents the idea of like a, a computer CPU. However, one could say that the whole system, which is the room, the book, the person, and the symbols, all together collectively understand Chinese. It's the system as a whole. And just like a whole room, a whole computer, uh, CPU, uh, graphics card, RAM, all of these things come together to possess strong AI. This is the argument that was made by a number of people when Searle came up with the Chinese room argument. That it isn't, it's the whole system that understands Chinese. And if the Chinese people who are having a communications with the system say that it understand, it, this system understands Chinese, then surely it passes the Turing test, and then surely so could anything else. So could a computer, and would be able to have strong AI. Well, Searle responds to this. He doesn't believe it's a very convincing argument. He says that, suppose I memorise all of the rules and all the characters, so it's all in my head, okay, so that we can take away this idea of it being a whole system. It's all gone into my brain, and I understand it all. I still won't understand Chinese, is what he said. Now, this is not a very convincing response, I don't believe, because if you could memorise all the characters of Chinese and all the rules for putting them together and how they go together and how you use them to um, you know, speak and, and, and respond to questions spoken to you in Chinese, doesn't that constitute an understanding of Chinese? Isn't that how language acquisition works? The question to Searle would be, what else would one have to do in order for him to believe that they actually possess an understanding of Chinese? Because if somebody knows all the characters, knows what they all, you know, knows everything about the characters, and knows all the rules for putting them together into forming sentences, what else is there that you need to know in order to say that you have acquired a language, to say that you understand Chinese. That's why this argument isn't particularly very convincing. Some suggest that, well, if you did memorise all the rules, then yes, you would understand Chinese. Then there's the current intuition argument against the Chinese room experiment. Uh, this argues that it looks a little bit like uh, an objection to Lady Lovelace's response to the Turing test. So, just because right now there is not a computer which has the ability to understand symbols semantically. Remember in the last video we looked at the distinction between syntax and semantics. Just because there's no computer that has that ability now, this does not mean there can never be a machine that could achieve this end. So Searle's Chinese room argument, again, you know, presents quite a static view of our understanding of scientific and technological development. Searle is suggesting that there is no way that a computer can ever have strong AI because it can never have semantic understanding but he isn't actually being he isn't actually successfully proving that to be the case in his Chinese room thought experiment argument he's just proving that a current machine um, doesn't have the ability to understand things semantically but he's not saying that there can never be there needs to be a reason why there can never be a machine that could ever possess strong ai because it could never understand semantics it can only understand syntax because there is nothing stopping us from thinking that machine in the future 
could develop we could develop machines that did actually have the ability to um, have strong AI. Then there's the robot argument. The robot argument, and we've got Asimo right here. So the robot argument is a little bit similar to the um, the systems reply, the systems argument. And it's that the person in the room may not understand Chinese in this context. However, if we were able to upload the rule book and all the characters into a robot, surely this robot would be able to understand Chinese. And this is very similar to if we go back, this is very similar to the idea that if Searle was to memorize it all, surely he would understand Chinese. If we'd put it all into a robot, just like if Searle was to, you know, put it all into his brain, would they be able to then understand Chinese? And then again, this begs the question that Searle would have to answer: What part of understanding and, and language acquisition are we missing here? What part of it do we not get by? uploading every all the characters and all the, the rules for how they all interact with each other. Searle so says that this misses the point between the syntactic and semantic distinction. He says just because it's in a robot that doesn't mean it goes from being a syntactic understanding to a semantic understanding. So what we're saying here is nothing has changed by uploading it into a robot. All that's changed is that it's all coming out of one space, and that's the robot. What's not changing is the robot's syntactic understanding of the language, and they're therefore developing into the semantic understanding. This is a very good response, because in reality there isn't anything that is, is, is doing that. But then, again, another counter-argument would be, it, does there necessarily have to be something that go from syntactic to semantic. Is there any examples in the real world of something going from a syntactic understanding to a semantic understanding? What really do these things mean when we look at them in a little bit more detail? How do we really understand what syntax and semantics actually are? So there are a lot of things that really should be questioned with the Chinese room argument. And really the question is, could a computer ever be able to think? And this is what I want to discuss in the end of this lesson. Can we ever have a computer which thinks? Okay, and this goes to the int the current intuition argument that we've just looked at. Is there anything that is stopping us from saying that a computer will be able to think in the future? That is the question that I'm posing to you uh, as we look at the response to the Chinese room argument. In the final lesson, we're going to have a look at: Are we in a computer simulation? It's a very interesting topic. It's a there's there's a lot of there's a lot of questions that don't really get answered because there are a lot of questions that can't really be answered in that in that lesson, which will be uh, the next lesson and the final lesson.